Today's math lesson is all about using comparison bars. Comparison bars are used when there are two people in a story problem and the two people are comparing the amounts of things that they have. This is a very interesting type of question and we use a very special item to help us solve this. These are what we call comparison bars. We have two rectangles and one circle. If you notice, the top rectangle is larger than the bottom rectangle. That is on purpose. We do that because the character or the person in the story who has more gets the bigger bar. The character who has less gets the smaller bar. The circle is a very special part of the comparison bar. This circle is only used if a number is attached to the words more or fewer. That is the only time a number goes in the circle. We're going to be practicing a few problems to hopefully help in understanding how to use comparison bars. Let's take a look at the first problem. Lisa has 16 apples. Alyssa has 12 apples. How many more does Lisa have? So I know I'm comparing Lisa and Alyssa, so I draw my comparison bars. Now it says Lisa has 16 apples and Alyssa has 12 apples. None of these numbers have more or fewer, but 16 is bigger than 12. So that means that Lisa gets the bigger bar. She has more apples. Lisa has 16 apples and Alyssa has 12 apples. That means that our missing number goes here in our circle. Now, if I think about these numbers as a math mountain, it helps me understand what I should do. In this problem, I'm missing one of my add-ends. I have my total and I have one of my add-ends. I'm going to use the counting up strategy to find my missing number. I'm going to start 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I counted up four to get my answer. So my answer is four, and then I look for my label, apples. In this problem, I know how many Lisa has, how many Alyssa has, and I was missing my circle. How many more does Lisa have? Let's try the next problem. Olivia bought four erasers. Her sister Megan bought six more than Olivia. How many erasers did Megan buy? So let's draw our comparison bars. And let's think about this problem. I know that Olivia had four erasers and Megan had six more than Olivia. That means that Megan has more. So let's put an M for Megan and an O for Olivia. Now we are ready to plug in our numbers. We know that Olivia has four erasers and Megan bought six more. Now, do you remember where a number with more or fewer goes? It goes in our special circle at the bottom. That means that in this problem, our missing number is at the top of our math mountain. And if the missing number is at the top, I need to add six and four to get my big number. Let's try it out. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That means that Megan has ten erasers. 
We have to read the problems very carefully to decide who gets the big bar and who gets the small bar before we can start plugging in our numbers. Let's try another. Tim has eight fewer books than Jim. If Jim has 17 books, how many does Tim have? So let's see what we know. We know that Tim has fewer books. Fewer means less. So if he has less, that means that Tim gets the smaller bar. And if Tim gets the smaller one, then Jim must get the larger bar. Now we can plug in our numbers. We have eight fewer. Do you remember where fewer goes? In the circle. And we know that Jim has 17 books. J for Jim. Let's put a 17. So we are missing that bottom square for Tim. Now, if it's a math mountain, I already have my king and I need to get my missing number. I'm going to use touch points and count down. So 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. That means that Tim has nine books. Remember, it's very important that we read the questions very carefully. Sometimes the wording is a little bit strange. So take your time. The first thing we must know is who has more and who has less. Once we figure that out, we can plug in their initials on the bar and then plug in our numbers. It will make our lives a lot easier if we follow those steps. Please watch the video again if you would like to have some more practice.